We talked about using NS Dictionary as a way of writing and reading structured data to a file in iOS. In order to illustrate how that works, I built a simple example that creates a set of nested dictionaries, writes it to a file, and then reads it back. So it's got a very simple user interface here. It's another one of these single view applications. Click the Run button and it does everything. Let's go take a look at what does everything actually means. The first thing we do is get the path for the documents directory and save it off in our property here. And the next thing we're going to do is to create our nested dictionary structure. In order to do that, we created two properties, master and detail. Both of these are NS mutable dictionaries that allows us to actually build up the dictionary data in code and change the contents of those dictionaries. And so we're going to create a master dictionary and we're going to create multiple instances of the detail dictionary inside of it. And as we did in our previous example, we have an output text view and we have this method log to text view so that we can show data while we're running it. Let's scroll back down here to run tapped and see how we build up the dictionaries. So we initialize the master dictionary and then we're going to create four detail dictionaries underneath it. And so we allocate a mutable dictionary for one detail. We set its ID key to the string detail and the number of its index. Then we set its detail ID is even key to either the string yes or the string no. Now, NS Dictionary IO has special handling for keys that have yes and no in there, which allows them to be treated essentially as Booleans. If you're trying to put something that's not a string and not a Boolean into an NS Dictionary for use with the IO, you need to use a NS wrapper object. For example, in this case, we're going to use NS number because we want to put in the square of the identifier. So we're going to end up with 1, 4, 9, 16. So we create an NS number with an integer and put it into square. And then we set the key ID squared for our detail object with the NS number object. And then finally, we add our detail object to the master object and we set the value. Here's our detail object. And for the key, we extract the ID value that we set up here and use that for the key. So now we have one master object and four detail objects inside of it. And so the first thing we're going to do is then write that out to the log so you can see what that hierarchy looks like. Now, to write it to a file, we create a file path. In this case, we're going to call our file dict.xml. Dictionaries have the ability to write and read themselves to files with a simple call called write to file. So we simply tell the master dictionary to write itself to a file at this path. And since we're not doing multiprocessor operation, we can say atomically no. And for you to be able to do this on the simulator, we write the file path out here so that you can go to the file location inside your Mac OS file hierarchy and actually find the XML file. So you can see what it looks like. So to read it back in, we're going to reinitialize our master dictionary to an empty dictionary, and then ask that master dictionary to load itself by init with contents of file and give it the file path. Now note, we did this in two steps on purpose. You could as easily have used this init with contents of file up here. And then once we've got it in, we just tell it to dump it out so we can see that we have exactly the same data that we had before. So let's see this in action. All right, here we've got our app. Let's click the Run button. And we can see here's our dictionary before writing to the file. We've got four entries, Detail 1, Detail 2, Detail 3, Detail 4. Here's where the file is located on your Mac OS file system users, and my particular user is called iTunes, so iTunes, library, application support, iPhone simulator, whatever your simulator version number is, applications, the GUID key for your application, the documents directory, and then there's our dict.xml. Let's actually go take a look at that. What I'll do is I'll come back here to the log where I also wrote that out, and I'll copy that up to the documents directory. And then I'll come back to the finder. And up here in the finder, there's go to folder. So I'm going to paste that in. Then I'll bring that folder onto the recording surface here so you can see it. And there's our dict.xml file. And if I hit the space bar, it will bring it in. And now you can see this is the XML for that structured data that we just wrote. And you can see that it looks just like a plist. 
every item in the dictionary as a key. And since the item in the particular key here is another dictionary, there's another dictionary key. And then inside that dictionary, we've got detail ID is even with our string, an ID squared and our value, an ID and our ID string. Notice there's also the option here to open with Xcode. Move the Finder window back away. And what I wanted to point out to you last on this particular thing is notice where ID is in quotes here, detail ID is even is not in quotes. As I said, there's special handling for items which have the string yes and no in all capital letters inside your code. It doesn't mean that it's treated as Booleans unless you want it to be, but it does mean that it makes it easy to handle it as Booleans. Because again, Apple built this mechanism for dealing with plists and other structured content like that. And that's our walkthrough of NS Dictionary File.io.